All right, everybody, Sylvia here. I am in the desert of Southern California. Today I want to talk about helmets, and I know this can be a very controversial topic, maybe one of the most controversial of all topics in cycling, but I don't want to address the controversy. A lot of people are anti-helmet wearing. As far as I'm concerned, it's none of my business whether or not you wear a helmet. We're all adults. We should do whatever makes us feel safe. I do wear a helmet. I recently replaced my helmet. I want to talk today about when should you replace your helmet. And then I want to do a walk around my helmet and show you guys how I have it set up. Come on, Myrtle. Let's go. All right, yes, yeah, so I recently replaced my helmet and it got me to thinking about when should you replace your helmet? It turns out that there's a rule of thumb that you should replace it about every three to four years. There's some things that you want to look for in your helmet. Maybe you're going to replace it a little bit sooner. And just like when you go for your trike ride or your bike ride, you kind of want to do a little safety check. You also want to take a look at your helmet and make sure that everything's okay. For instance, you want to look at the straps and make sure that they're not frayed. And there's a little adjustment knob on the back of most helmets and it adjusts a couple of plastic pieces to make the helmet tighter or looser so that it fits on your head. They really are quite thin and they have a tendency to crack and break and you really want to see when this happens before it happens. Once it cracks and breaks your helmet's not going to fit anymore and having these broken plastic pieces jamming in your head is not going to be very comfortable. There are a couple of other scenarios where you might want to replace your helmet sooner. One is if you are touring like I used to do six to eight months of the year in very hot climates. Maybe I was riding five, six days a week for five, six hours a day and that sun is just beating down on my helmet and it is breaking down the materials in the helmets and it is compromising the integrity. The way I have always decided when to replace my helmet is when the color fades. Um, I feel like that shows me that the, the helmet's just not as strong and it's probably not going to do its job. And so once the color fades, I replace it. And of course, you've lost your visibility. It's kind of nice having these bright colors. Um, the other thing is, you know, I haven't been bike touring for a couple of years. I've been traveling with my trike in the back of my truck, pulling my trailer, and I have all my cycling things in a plastic tub, including my helmet. And what I noticed is I've just been keeping my helmet loose in this tub, and my helmet got some divots in it, some dents in it, and I decided that I should replace it because you really don't want to have any divots and dents in your helmet. Um, you know, you don't want your helmet to be compromised at all. For, I am very fortunate. I have never needed my helmet. It's kind of like wearing a seat belt. I've never needed a seat belt either. But just because I haven't needed it doesn't mean I won't need it. And I want my helmet to work um, as it's intended just in case. So those are some uh, things to look for to think about replacing your helmet. And now I just kind of want to do a tour around my helmet, show you guys how I have it set up. Um, one thing I've had on all of my helmets is a mirror. I really like having a helmet mirror. There are other mirrors you can get. I know people have mirrors mounted on their trikes, and I do have one mounted on my trike. I actually mounted this mirror thinking that I was going to get a cat, and I wanted to have a mirror so that I could keep an eye on the cat in the basket. 
But I have found that those mirrors, there's so much vibration there. It, for me, it's really hard to see clearly and be confident about what I'm seeing in that mirror. I've also had those mirrors break because of the vibration. And so I have found that um, this helmet mounted mirror is works much better for me. There are other helmet mounted mirrors and there's even mirrors you can get for your glasses. I think they're called Take a Look. Um, but I have a particular situation. I wear contact lenses and these are monovision. So one eye is for reading, the other one is for distance. And those little tiny glass mounted mirrors just do not work for me. This mirror here is, is much bigger and it's a little bit further out. And so for me, this just works very, very well. And the other thing that I really am a big fan of is having a blinky on the back of your helmet. Uh, recently, I purchased the Garmin Varia Barg radar safety device, and I've been having that mounted on the back of my helmet. Um, if you don't know about this, it's actually a pretty interesting device. And you know what, I can put a, a link up here so that you can look at that if you wish. And I'm not entirely sure if I'll continue to keep this on the back of my helmet. I might mount it to the back of my trike, um, but I also have just a little blinky, very lightweight, very small. And I am a big fan of these little blinkies uh, for a couple of reasons. Having it on the back of your helmet blinking as you are riding, you're moving your head. And so this isn't just blinking, but it's moving. And so I think that just gives you a little bit more visibility and a little bit more interest for the car drivers. And so as you're going, it's moving and it's blinking. And I just think it adds a little bit more safety. I also have inside my helmet a piece of paper and it has pertinent information just in case something happens, maybe I'm unconscious, I can't give EMTs or other people information that would be helpful. And so I keep a piece of paper, it has my name, my date of birth, my blood type, allergies, any medications, emergency contact, and a phone number. The other thing I also keep on here is the date that I bought my helmet. You know, you could be at a bike shop, maybe they've got a sale on helmets. You try it on, it fits you really well. You can't remember how old your helmet is. Maybe it's only a year old, maybe it's four years old and certainly time to be replaced. And so it's just a really good idea to write that down somewhere so that you have a record of when you bought your helmet. The other thing that I have on my helmet is uh, this visor, and I probably get more comments on where I got this visor than anything else anybody asks me about in all of my YouTube videos. You know, a friend of mine makes these visors and you can get them only at Tater Tot. You have to come to the triking event in Idaho. It's every June and Leslie brings these visors in every color you can imagine. She installs them. You can see there's zip ties here. And she even puts a little inscription. Um, they don't cost anything, uh, but you have to come to Tater Tot to get this visor. I added this trimming on here. I think it looks really sharp. And this is uh, something that I found at an auto parts store. It's door edge guard. It comes as a two pack. And I not only think it looks really great, um, but you know, there's another thing that people do with their helmets a lot is they add a camera mount, maybe for a GoPro up on top. And I used to do that, uh, but I kind of found that that viewpoint was far too static. It was really tricky to get uh, it positioned correctly. And the only reason why I would use a helmet mounted camera is if I had to have both hands on the grips, on the brakes, maybe I'm going downhill and i it's just too fast to hold a camera because that's what I always do. I hand hold my GoPro or my Insta360 ONE X2 and I, recently 
uh, picked up the Insta360 GoTo. I actually use this as a dash cam, but it comes with a bunch of different mounts and it has a little clip and that will clip onto this visor very, very easily. And now with this trimming, it'll be secure because this visor is a very slick plastic. And I was worried that if I put this on here, it might just slide off as I'm flying down a road. But now I can get uh, fun footage flying down the road and get it safely with both hands on the brakes. There is one more thing. This is a lamb helmet and I replaced a bell helmet. I don't have any recommendation about helmets. I know a lot of people are using the Senna helmets now. C-E-N-A, they have Bluetooth intercom. You can listen to music. You can attach your phone to get notifications, you can answer the phone, and you can also talk to other people that have these intercom Bluetooth helmets. I tried one on and I found it to be too round for my head. I have more of an oval shaped head. And so it just didn't really work for me, but I know a lot of people who ride with those. And so I thought, you know, it might be kind of fun to be able to uh, converse with other people that I'm riding with. And it's also a really safe way to listen to music, maybe answer the phone, um, but it was not comfortable for me. And that is for me the number one most important criteria for me with a helmet is that it should be comfortable. After all, you're wearing it for a long time, maybe many hours at a time, and you're probably gonna have it for a few years. So yeah, that's my helmet on all the things I have mounted on it. I would love to know what you think about all of this. Please leave a comment in the comments section below. I love hearing from everybody. You guys have been fantastic with your comments. I especially appreciated all the comments I got about whether or not I should get a cat. I have many more videos coming up. I'm actually pretty far behind on my videos. And I think my next video is gonna be about my decision about whether or not I should get a cat and my travel plans. Uh, my time here in the desert is coming to an end. It's getting to be too hot. I gotta move on. And so I'm gonna tell you guys uh, where I'm headed next. So yeah, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time.